Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, we still have quite a few people joining, so we're going to wait maybe a minute or two before we get started. All right, everybody. Uh, welcome again to the webinar. Uh, today's webinar is called Think Comes to You, and we're going to be presenting information that we learned earlier this month when we were at the Think Conference in San Francisco. So we're going to take some of the highlights that we saw um, and share them. As we go through, just some quick logistics, in the good webinar panel, you should see an area titled Questions. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask, uh, we're going to answer all of those that we can at the end. So as we're going through, if you see something that uh, sparks a question, feel free to, to jot it down in that questions area. And if we do not have a chance on the webinar, we will we'll get those questions answered uh, and follow up messages to everyone. So with that said, let's uh, let's kick this off. Uh, I'm going to do just one slide about who we are as a company in case anyone on the line is not familiar with PM Square. Uh, we are a professional services and software solutions company. We focus on implementations and deployment uh, training and road mapping and strategy as it relates to data and analytics. And specifically, we do that in large part with IBM uh, through IBM Cognos Analytics and IBM Planning Analytics. Uh, we also have our own proprietary software solutions that we've developed on top of those tools. Uh, we have custom software development services, and then we have IBM licensing management that we can provide. Uh, if, you, if you look off to the right, there are a few highlights of uh, things within our company. We've received quite a few awards. We have a number of IBM champions in the company. We're a gold business partner with IBM. We have have consultants that have won cars and uh, written books. and if anyone's familiar with Cognos Paul, he is a, a PM Square employee and has been for, for quite a while. So uh, that's a quick overview of who we are. If you want to learn more, uh, definitely feel free to reach out to us. We'll have our contact information at the end. We also have information about our, our newly launched website at the end. Uh, one last bit of, uh, of information before we jump into this webinar is our event, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's called the Business Analytics Conference, or BACON, as we lovingly call it. This will be our fourth year hosting this conference, and uh, it'll be August 7th through 8th this year. For those of you uh, who have wanted to come in the past but not been able to get budget, or for those of you who have never been or maybe have been and would love to come for free, we are going to be giving away a free uh, pass to BACON. Uh, to attendees, a, a, an attendee today based on attention score. So go to webinar, we'll score everyone's attention score with how much uh, each person paid attention to this webinar. Uh, it's based on if you're looking at the screen and uh, participating, <laughs> I guess also probably asking questions. And anyone who has a, an attention score of higher than 80% will put it into a drawing and one of those people will win a free pass to bacon. So. I uh, look forward to seeing who that is, and we'll look forward to seeing that person at Bacon this year. Uh, for anyone else, you can register for that. Uh, there are links on our website in the events area. So a few quick introductions. My name is Dustin Atkinson. I'm the managing partner for PM Square. Our presenters today are Ryan Dolly, who uh, has two, two hats that he wears here. He's a senior solutions architect. Uh, architecting solutions for our consultants, also often helping uh, with proving out technologies. And he's also a product manager for our custom software development. 
Uh, Mike DeGoyes, who is our managing consultant, he manages our, our consultants throughout uh, the Americas, and Eric Dolly, who is one of our consultants and wins the award for best beard. So with that, I'm going to hand things over to Ryan, uh, who will uh, give us a quick overview of what we saw at Think 2019, and then he'll actually be presenting the next section on IBM Watson Studio as well. Um, after that, we'll hear from, <clears throat> from Mike on IBM Cloud Private for Data, and then from Ryan on IBM Cognos Roadmap, and at the end, we'll answer the questions that we've received. So with that, Ryan, uh, take it away. Uh, great. Thanks, Dustin. So, uh, talking about Think 2019, I'm, I'm going to give an overview of uh, kind of the messaging that we heard overall and PM Square's take on um, what we learned at Think 2019 and how that applies specifically to kind of uh, analytics, business intelligence, and data management. And of course, IBM is a huge company that offers products across pretty much every uh, industry or, or vertical that you could think of. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll really just hone in on the analytics piece for our conversation today. So uh, to kind of give some perspective to everything we're going to talk about today, um, wanted to give kind of a state of the analytics marketplace uh, in, you know, kind of winter 2019 um, to see how IBM fits into it. Uh, so to understand it, you know, slight uh, two minute history lesson here to, to see where we are. You know, we have this thing, it's kind of, we've settled on calling it mode one analytics or enterprise reporting. Uh, but if you're a long time Cognos customer, this is probably what you're most familiar with, right? In, in the Cognos world, this is, we've got a, an IT BI team, you know, we're building models and framework manager, and then we're using Report Studio or the Cognos 11 report authoring suite on top of our framework manager model to build standardized enterprise reports that are being burst out or, or run with prompts, you know, um, that sort of thing. Very traditional uh, business intelligence SDLC that we've been doing now for a couple decades. Um, coming into that, starting in the kind of late uh, 2000s, early 20 teens, we have mode two analytics. This is your, your data discovery. Uh, oftentimes it's a desktop tool, maybe Tableau or Power BI, something like that. But as opposed to the IT driven paradigm, this is really an end user focused paradigm, often built on some hodgepodge of spreadsheets that someone got access to and joined together uh, in a data discovery tool, um, but very visual, not standard reports, but you know, more dashboards and visualizations, and again, business user driven. And now we, we have an emerging market uh, that is gonna be augmented analytics. Um, and where this uh, really comes in is you know, it, it works with both mode one and mode two, um, but this is machine guided human discovery. And if you've gone to Cognos 11 uh, and especially 11.1, you know, you've kind of gotten a, a sample of the direction that, uh, that things are headed. Um, it's really, it's natural language based. Uh, it's it got a lot of automation built into it. It's automatically gonna build a visualization automatically suggest uh, data cleansing activities, and really built on a backbone of machine learning and data science, not just data warehousing and data modeling, right? So this is kind of, if you were to look at mode one, mode two, and augmented analytics, uh, you have a view of you know, the last 20 years of, of what we've been doing in our industry. So what is IBM's direction? Um, we're gonna talk a lot, about, a lot about a lot of these things in more detail as we go through the webinar today, so I'll just kind of hit on the high points of them, but a big thing coming out of IBM uh, is really Cognos for all enterprise users, right? So Cognos has been recognized um, by, uh, you know, uh, by IBM, uh, but also by outside, uh, you know, kind of evaluation firms like Gartner as really the only solution that offers all of these, mode one, mode two, and augmented analytics. And, and IBM is really, um, you know, using, views Cognos as a BI platform, but also as a key core component of some larger enterprise data management and data science platforms that we'll be discussing in greater detail coming up. Um, augmented analytics, as I discussed, this is already available in Cognos 11.1. Um, so, you know, if you've, if you've taken the time to play with that, um, you, you've seen those features. Uh, AI and data science, um, IBM is really making a huge investment here. So 
there's a, a product I'll be talking about called Watson Studio that IBM had a lot of great sessions on at Sync um, that really combines open source uh, data science and AI uh, technologies and libraries with IBM's proprietary software and IBM's Watson Cloud APIs in the one easy to deploy and manage solution. Um, a huge, huge emphasis at Sync this year um, on the microservices approach and containerization. So whether you're talking about DB2 or Cognos or planning analytics or, or Watson Studio or um, IBM Cloud Private, uh, everything uh, either is already containerized or that's uh, on the upcoming roadmap. So really a, a huge shift in, across IBM's whole product portfolio from monolithic applic applications to, to containerization. Um, and then another huge uh, announcement would be, you know, IBM's complete data platform called IBM Cloud Private for Data. Um, and this is something that uh, Mike is going to be talking about later on that really combines all of IBM's existing technologies and many exciting advancements that IBM has made over the last few years in, in things like data processing and storage um, and artificial intelligence into a single platform uh, that's deployable pretty much um, anywhere on-prem or on IBM's cloud or on competitor clouds like AWS or Azure. Uh, but this is really a very exciting end-to-end -end, uh, data science and analytics platform that is easy to deploy and manage and does include within it um, Cognos Analytics. Uh, so this is kind of IBM's overall direction. And then we're going to take you through a lot of these things over the course of uh, the next hour uh, or 45 minutes or so um, and show you what all of this means. So um, IBM Watson Studio. Uh, well, uh, what is IBM Watson Studio? Um, the first thing to understand is that Watson Studio is a, a data science platform. It's one platform um, that IBM has built out to, to be deployed in the way that makes the most sense for you. So whether that's Watson Studio Cloud, which is a, a, a complete kind of um, SaaS uh, AI and data science offering that you know you spin up in a matter of minutes and, and you have all of the functional, functionality available to you immediately. Um, Watson Studio Local, which is going to be the same type of functionality, but deployed on, on kind of a, a private cloud or, or managed locally within uh, your data center. And then Watson Studio Desktop, which kind of boils it down to a core feature set that can be easily deployed on your desktop. I mean, all three of these options are available with this product. Uh, so keep that in mind as we talk through it, um, that kind of no matter what deployment style you're interested in, uh, IBM has something to offer. And that's really, I think, the direction they're taking with everything at this point is making it very easy to deploy in the way that you're most comfortable with. Um, if we want to dive a little deeper into what it is, really what it boils down to um, is IBM is taking the best of breed of the open source data science and AI technologies and data processing technologies and their proprietary ones and merging them together into a single framework uh, for building, managing, and deploying AI or data science projects. That's really what this boils down to. So if you look at the list of technologies you see here, um, we have SPSS Modeler, which is you know, has been part of the IBM product portfolio for, I think, over a decade now, um, and it's something that IBM builds and maintains themselves. We also have our studio, which is an open source, very popular open source um, data science technology. All of that comes together into this one package um, that you can deploy and manage uh, very easily. And, and that's really part of the, the key selling point for Watson Studio is, how, is really how it combines those things together and makes it very easy for you to deploy and manage these technologies rather than trying to spin up all of this stuff independent of one another and integrate them together. It's a complete end-to-end -end AI workflow, and that's really important to, to understand here is, is within Watson Studio, you can do all of the things that you, you see here. So connected to data, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud or as you know, a spreadsheet or CSV that you have, um, you know, utilize Watson, uh, IBM's knowledge catalog, which is kind of their uh, metadata management and search feature to find the data that you need, um, pre prep the data for analysis, build and train uh, machine learning uh, and data science models, whether, again, that's, you know, an SPSS model or 
RStudio or Watson Machine Learning, all of them are available within this one platform. Um, build deployment pipelines for those models and then have the ability to monitor, analyze, and manage it. So um, you can do a data science project, deploy the data science project on a schedule, and then uh, maintain or monitor that project to make sure that uh, it's still, you know, your predictions um, are still uh, good, that your models are still of high quality, um, and adjust as necessary as time goes on. It's important to understand, I think, that, you know, Watson Studio is a platform of projects. Right, so um, we we may be used to building platforms, especially if you're a traditional BI guy like I am, where you know the world I come out of is we're going to build a data uh, data warehouse. It's kind of an all-encompassing enterprise platform for data, um, and then we're going to build stuff on top of it. Watson Studio is is more concerned with uh, is really structured more around kind of the microservices approach, which would be I'm going to create a project to solve a specific problem, right? And I'm gonna take that through to beginning to end. And then if I have a different problem I wanna solve, you know, I'm not going to kind of try to layer that problem into my existing workflow. I'm just gonna create a whole new project with an independent workflow um, and manage that. And you can kind of see that in, in the screenshot that I have here. Now each project is made of assets. And, and one of the coolest things about Watson Studio is how easy it is to get at these assets. So if you look at the screenshot I have here, if I want to add uh, some, you know, uh, machine learning based visual recognition to my project, I simply click on the add to project button and then choose the visual recognition option uh, from the available assets. Um, likewise, you know, if I want to create something in S SPSS modeler, I, I click add project and it brings me into a fully web based version of modeler. Um, so all the things that you see available here are, are available um, by simply clicking a couple buttons. And it makes it very compelling, especially if you don't already have a data science or, or AI infrastructure built up. This is, it really delivers that infrastructure in a box. And, and I, I was personally extremely impressed with the progress IBM has made in this product um, between when I last saw it and this most recent uh, trip to Sync. It's important to understand too, it's a platform that allows you to build, deploy, and secure. So, um, you know, projects and, and assets are deployed instantly on IBM's, using IBM's new microservice architecture. Um, the, monitor, the monitoring tools are great uh, that they have in here for seeing, you know, are my models running? Um, are my, is the predictive value of my model holding up over time? Do I need to retrain it? Um, it will help guide you into making all of those decisions. Um, and it's integrated with IBM Knowledge Catalog. So when you, you know, if you use Knowledge Catalog, it's very easy in your enterprise for someone to search uh, for any of these assets or models that you have available and get access to those uh, very easily. So, I mean, the final takeaway here to understand about this, um, you know, what does it really mean when I say, okay, you can use of these open source technologies or IBM's off-the-shelf technologies in one platform. Well, it means that Watson Studio is great for this. What you see here is a, a Jupyter notebook, very, very popular um, data science technology where uh, you, you write in Python um, in, in one of these notebooks and, you know, you can schedule the notebook to run to do your data science project through there. So if you're someone who's comfortable with what you see on the screen right now, this is available to you in Watson Studio. Um, but it's also great for this. You know, this is Watson Studio's version of SPSS Modeler. So for someone who understands data science, understands statistical analysis, uh, but maybe isn't as comfortable with, with programming something like Python or R, uh, you know, this you, kind of your classic SPSS graphical interface for doing the same types of statistical analysis and data science is available. Um, and then finally, and, and this is the thing I like the best, it's also great for this. So like this is the level that I'm at, right? As, as your old school uh, BI guy, where um, you know, S, I, I'm not comfortable with SPSS modeler at this point. I'm certainly not comfortable with, with writing my own Python, um, but Watson Studio has out of the box, you know, you point it to a data set, you answer some simple prompts about what it is you're trying to figure out, um, and it will make suggestions, what type of estimators uh, should you use in this machine learning model? And it explains to you what those are. 
you simply click on the ones you want and you go from there and, and let Watson Studio train the models and evaluate the models and do all of that stuff for you, right? So it's a very smooth ramp to go from something like you're seeing here where I come in, I make a couple, I make a couple selections and I let the software handle it um, all the way up to, hey, I've, I've learned Python, I've learned R and I'm doing all of this myself within one single platform with one single, um, you know, uh, governance wrapped around it and security and de deployment pipeline. It's all in one. Um, so what's the takeaway? Well, if you're curious about uh, getting into AI, um, Watson Studio Desktop is available. It's very low cost. You can just deploy it on a single machine um, and it's a very easy way to get started. If you're more serious about it, I would take a look at Watson Studio Cloud and Local. Um, there, you know, uh, there, it's a fully loaded model, build and deploy pipeline, very easy um, to put into place and, and get started. Um, and if really you're just attending this webinar because you're curious about Cognos, um, I would throw out, you know, Cognos dashboarding is already part of Watson Studio. It's available in it today. Um, and deeper integrations between the two are in the works where I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, when I'm talking to you next year during this webinar, um, if we're talking about how, you know, Watson Studio and, and Cognos can talk to each other in a, in a very robust manner. Um, so, so those are the, the key takeaways uh, for Watson Studio. If you're interested in it, you know, feel free to reach out and contact us um, and I can uh, show you more about what I learned. But I would say overall, I was very happy uh, with this product. I, I really think it's evolved in, in a great way to be um, something that is useful for both organizations that are just dipping their toes into this world and organizations who are very advanced. And with that, I'm going to hand things over to uh, Mike to talk you through IBM Cloud Private for Data. All right, thanks, Ryan. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to excited to share some information about IBM Cloud Private for Data, which you might hear uh, referred to in shorthand as ICP for Data, which is admittedly a bit of a mouthful. It has nothing to do with the insane clown passe. Uh, it is, it is just the naming for this new platform that brings together uh, a bunch of the, the various microservices uh, related, related to uh, IBM's data portfolio. Uh, you know, Ryan talked about how there's this migration happening towards microservices from more monolithic type of applications. And uh, we're going to kind of look at that in a little more detail here. Okay, so... Oop. Need to back up here. All right, so before we get into actually talking about IBM Cloud Private for Data, a little bit of foundation. And I, I don't think I could have attended Think uh, 2019 and not shared the AI ladder. Uh, this is this was kind of referred to quite frequently, um, but I think it's it's actually worth talking about just for a second here uh, because it's it's not just a set of buzzwords. It actually makes a lot of sense, and I think provides some good foundational understanding. Um, so the, kind of the idea here, uh, or the phrase that goes along with this, is uh, information architecture, or IA, before AI. And the thought here is that as an organization, you really have to have your, your information assets solidified, governed, cleansed, before you can expect to get any type of insights from your AI, from your machine learning, from your deep learning. And so the, this isn't an unfamiliar concept. I mean, we've we talked for a long time about kind of garbage in, garbage out, even when it comes to things like reporting. But the issues with, with garbage data feeding into your uh, operationalized machine learning processes are only exacerbated, at least with the report. You know, someone might look at a report and notice that some of the data looks weird. Uh, but as you get kind of further downstream uh, before, before human review actually comes into place, uh, you can just run into even bigger problems. You can be predicting things that are going to happen in the future that are based on garbage data. You could be in real time doing some type of analysis um, to make a recommendation for a customer. And if it's based on information that uh, is not, it's not clean and reliable and governed, then you really could end up kind of leading your, your organization astray. So the AI ladder is really just kind of talks about that, how the first step is to collect the data, you got to organize it, and only then can you really start analyzing it and infusing it uh, into your business processes. 
Okay, so the, the ICP for data uh, uh, kind of architecture, structure, or uh, theories that underlie it. So we've been talking about microservices already here. Uh, it's, it's the idea of moving away from monolithic applications to loosely coupled services that kind of run in their own individual containers and can be tested as such, can be allocated resources as needed for those specific containers, and then really running those containers wherever makes sense. Uh, whatever is efficient, whatever can uh, yield cost savings for the organization. So you might want to run things on your internal architecture. You might want to run it on a cloud platform. You might want to run it on a different cloud for, platform because you might yield cost savings from a different cl cloud platform for a certain type of load or at a certain time of time of the week. Uh, so that's really what we when we talk about multi-cloud provisioning. It's giving you those kinds of options. So there's a whole set of technologies that IBM Cloud Private and IBM Cloud Private for Data is, is based on. Um, you can see some of those below, things like Docker and Kubernetes. Um, these are kind of open source frameworks. And uh, just like Ryan was talking about with Watson Studio, these are integrated very closely into ICP for Data. So another one of the kind of core um, uh, foundational elements of ICP for data is who uses the system and it's really designed to be as a collaboration platform in a sense so there's both an architectural component to it as well as kind of a user interface collaboration component to it and so this slide just kind of speaks to the fact that everywhere from app developers to data analysts business analysts business partners everyone can collaborate together in this tool and use the aspects of it that are applicable to their job. So there's, there's uh, elements included for collecting your data, for organizing the data, for analyzing the data. If you're a data scientist, there's going to be tools that are included that you can utilize. But if you're a, a data expert from the business side, you can also easily kind of prepare that data and feed it to the data scientist to ensure the quality and the governance of that data. Okay, so the next few slides have some actual screenshots uh, from ICP for Data. And, you know, we're, we're not going to talk real in detail about exactly what's on these, but I did want you to have some, some visual representation of, of what this tool actually looks like. Because overall, it's, from what we've seen, it's very user-friendly. Uh, it's, it's very kind of elegant in how it does uh, the, the various functions that are included in it. So, uh, first of all, when it comes to gathering and managing your data, uh, you really, you can point to all sorts of data sources. They can be traditional relational databases or they can be more big data Hadoop type of systems, data lakes. They can all be integrated uh, into this one platform. And just as in Watson Studio, there's a bit of a movement towards the idea of projects. You have the same thing here in ICP for data, where in one sense you're building out kind of a platform for data quality in your organization. But at the same time, if you need to pull in a CSV file or some kind of specific data asset for a project you're trying to to accomplish, you can kind of pull those things out into a sandbox and work there. So this is this is kind of a big part of it that I wanted to focus on today. So I have a, a, a few uh, visuals to talk about it. Um, but data virtualization is a really exciting piece that's that's built into ICP for data, and uh, this actually ties into uh, Cognos as well, which we want to kind of anchor things back to here, and we're, we're, I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes. Um, but Data virtualization and ICP for data, it, there's really a kind of new set of technology around it. Some of the concepts of it are going to be familiar. Uh, if, if anybody's familiar with things like data virtuals, or, or I'm sorry, data federation, uh, it, it's kind of a similar idea, but the technology behind it is much more advanced. So what does this allow you to do? Essentially, you can query across many different data sources. There's a bunch of them listed, listed, listed out there, but there's many more. Uh, but as you do this, there's actually a lot of performance options optimization that's going on. So for certain use cases, you're going to see exponentially uh, faster results than you would with the traditional type of data federation solution. Uh, it's really integrated into ICP for data. Uh, so your, your enterprise data catalog, your governance, all of that, which we're going to look at more in a second, that's tied in. Access via Cognos, talk about that more in a second. Security embedded, uh, schema discovery and folding. Uh, we'll, I have a slide in a second about schema folding. Really cool uh, what that does. 
And then it, it all ties into data virtuals, uh, sorry, with your, your SQL apps and your various other kind of open source tools like Jupyter Notebooks, as well as IBM tools like Cognos. Probably noticing a theme here at this point. So this just speaks to that, that fundamental difference between classic federation uh, and this new technology that's behind the data virtualization built into ICP for data. And it's basically just saying that the old way was going out to wherever the data sat, and it was trying to get this large set of data from whatever node had that piece, and then bring it back to this coordinator and try to piece it all together. Whereas this new technology, the different nodes actually can communicate with each other. They can uh, kind of coordinate the load amongst themselves, um, sharing resources as, as uh, is efficient. And then once they almost have the results complete, pass, pass it back to the coordinator, which just kind of finishes off the query and presents the results. So schema folding, I mentioned a second ago, this is super cool. So the idea here is that you can take tables that are distributed maybe across different databases or different geographic locations. And in, in an automated sense, those can be pulled together and queried as one. So the example here is maybe a different bank branches. They each have their own table that represents a similar kind of information for data that's at another, all the other bank branches. But they might not be absolutely identical Maybe there's a field or two that are different. Um, maybe there are some data types that aren't exactly the same. Um, the technology built into ISP for data can actually both recognize these and make them queryable as one and can also resolve some of those minor differences, which if anyone's tried to write a union query before, you know that your tables have to be exactly identical. Um, so this is an, an exciting piece of technology. So many of us are familiar with the alternative to the to the state of virtualization, which is pulling all the data into one location. And you know this is still going to work for certain use cases. We're not saying that the state of virtualization is the answer to everything. IBM isn't claiming that either. Um, but in certain situations, there's a lot of overhead associated with this. There can be um, issues with GDPR uh, for organizations that are operating in the EU, uh, where the data actually needs to be federated in a sense. It can't be all consolidated into one database. And so this new solution helps address a lot of these uh, concerns with the traditional consolidated centralized data lake or data warehouse. All right, so uh, before we move on, just one other thing I wanted to clarify uh, about the uh, data virtualization is that it's totally queryable through SQL. Uh, so you don't have to ha have a connector for every single possible tool that you would want to connect to it. It's basically, it presents itself as uh, a DB2 database. And so basically any system that can utilize a DB2 connection will be able to access data virtualization through this platform. So you saw um, mentioned, of course, in addition to like Cognos and such, even tools like Tableau that are outside the IBM portfolio, they'll be able to utilize this data virtualization. Okay, so moving on to this slide. So uh, these next few slides give some further glimpses uh, into ICP for data and just kind of to the different roles that might interact with the tool. So for all data workers, um, there's things that allow you to essentially wrangle, refine your data, shape it, and then even Cognos dashboarding, separate from the full Cognos integration we're going to talk about in a second, dashboards are already built in to ICP for data. So if you're just trying to kind of get a sense of the data in your organization, it has, it has tools for that. If you need to do more intensive sort of ETL processes, there's a whole system for that called transform projects inside ICP for data as well. And in terms of governance, this is a huge focus. Um, again, going back to the information architecture before AI, uh, there's, there's this really extensive framework for classifying your data, categorizing it, putting in security, a security layer on top of it before exposing it for all these projects and uh, different user classes in your organization and being able to visualize things. And, and a key component of this as well is that there's a strong automated component. So when you point it to a particular data source, it will go out and it will start interrogating that data source and will give you a start on compiling your metadata. And then that metadata can be refined further by uh, data governance users. All right, and once you have that, that solid information architecture, you can then move in to implementing AI. 
So there are tools here in ICP for Data for actually building out machine learning models, again, using this whole suite of tools, uh, both from IBM as well as from the open source community. And then finally, once those things are built, you can, you can uh, automate those things, operate operationalize them, include them into your business processes. This is really the goal here. I'm not just building out a model that kind of sits somewhere and gets refined and somewhere there's a data scientist who's looking at it and is kind of feeding uh, 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 recommendations here and there, but really making it part of your business process. So day to day as users are interacting with a certain kind of system, whether they're internal users or external users, that machine learning is integrated, recommendations are being fed at the point in time that they're actually needed. And so this all can be done uh, through the same platform. So just quickly, here's a few uh, top use cases uh, just to try to bring this to a place where the rubber meets the road. So you can manage all your enterprise data regardless of where it lives. We talked fairly extensively about data virtualization. We didn't talk as much about streaming analytics, um, but there is something called uh, DB2 uh, Event Store that's included here, which basically allows you to just feed in billions of rows of data every day, process those, and perform analytics in real time. Uh, and then, as we just were talking about, we can operationalize our data science and our AI um, for things like customer churn, cross-sell, upsell, again, at the point in time that the information is needed, predictive maintenance on machinery. Uh, Modernize, uh, shift to cloud native applications away from these monolithic, uh, locally run applications, and finally move towards smarter compliance. So ready for G GDPR as well as various other um, government regulations. Okay, so I know there's a probably decent portion of the audience here who are Cognos people. They've worked with Cognos for a long time. And so one of the reasons we wanted to make sure that we covered IBM Cloud Private for Data is because Cognos is being fully integrated into this platform. And this isn't just being done as they're kind of dumping in the application as it is. Uh, the same functionality will be there, but they're actually modernizing it from an architectural standpoint. So we've been talking about these microservices, right? So Cognos is actually, as some of you may know, who have worked with on the architecture side of Cognos, it does have a set of services that run behind the scenes, but they're all part of one application. Well, some of those services are essentially being split out, so it can it is more adaptable to a containerized type of environment. And so that's the version of Cognos that's being included in IBM Cloud Private for Data. Um, Cognos will be able to query the data virtualization layer as a data source, um, as you might expect, um, given that it's exposed as SQL, uh, but that's gonna be basically very tightly coupled in. And uh, it will tie into the ICP for data a security model as well. Um, this is going to be what's considered a premium add-on. So it, this isn't a licensing discussion here. But essentially, there's, there's certain tools that are baked into the IBM Cloud Private for Data platform. And then there's certain ones that are considered premium add-ons. So Cognos won't come fully included in just getting ICP for data. It will be something you can add on if you want to utilize it. And then this is going to be available on March 29th, uh, 2019. So we're, we're very excited about these worlds coming together. Um, obviously, there's a whole lot in ICP for data that is about um, getting your data to a point where it is fully trustworthy, which is something that we focused on a long time as an organization when we work with our customers. And so we think there's a lot of exciting new, new tools in ICP for data um, that, uh, that advance uh, this type of effort. And so being able to tie Cognos into that, we think is very exciting. All right, and continuing on the Cognos theme, I'm going to turn it over to Eric. Thank you, Mike. Um, so what I'll be going over is um, the Cognos roadmap and what we learned at Think, um, and also be going over some of the Cognos Analytics 11.1 .1 features for you. So. All right, so just, uh, this is kind of forward looking. So this is a standard disclaimer, just saying that anything that you learn from here is is not set in stone, it's it's uh, liable to change. So this is kind of a standard disclaimer. 
All right, so first, what's new in Cognos 11.1? Um, we have improvements to dashboarding, which visualizes your data. Uh, we have the new tool uh, exploration, which lets you kind of explore trends and get insights using Watson. We have uh, the story tool, um, which has been in uh, Cognos Analytics for a while, but I don't think people actually use it very often. Um, we have the data modules, which let you create new combinations of your data. And we have uh, the ability to upload Excel files. So exploration, what is the exploration tool? So what it is, it's kind of a, a dedicated workspace um, where users can uh, work with their data through kind of ad hoc queries and like automatically generated insights in order to better understand what's going on. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like intro, intro to data science. So it allows you to look at uh, your data and get some, maybe some, some top level insights that just looking at your data raw, you wouldn't have been able to get yourself. So, and you can use this, uh, directly um, you can explore it directly or use existing visualizations um, and uh, it's, it's kind of a low barrier to entry so it's kind of easy to get started so the ai assistant so what the ai assistant is is it's a um, kind of a way to uh, explore your data in in, in a natural way in, in a way that a business user might ask ask a question so it supports a um, natural language processing and natural language queries so that, that lets what you like what that lets you do is just ask a question of your data and be able to get the insights from it so like what were, what were the earnings for this department last month and it can understand what you're saying and what you're asking for look at the data and surface that relevant information and show you a few uh visualizations and ask you like does one of these match your needs and it also um it's available during dashboarding or the data exploration tool, so it's available in both of those. Um, and it helps reduce bias just by kind of guiding users towards something that the system thinks would be most impactful. So dashboarding, um, I'm sure a lot of you have been using dashboards already, um, but that, and you know, every release that they've been getting improved. So for those who maybe are still on Cognos 10, what dashboards are, it's just kind of a, a self-service tool that allows you to kind of rapidly explore, format, and present, present your data in nice visualizations. Um, and it it's, exists in a, a unified browser and mobile experience. So the, the, the visualization that you make in the desktop will look good on mobile too. And it uses your existing security model. So, you don't, you, so once you give your users access to this, you don't um, have to worry about uh, data security because it already uses the data security you have set up inside of Cognos. So data modeling. So data modeling, it's kind of the, uh, you can think of it as the evolution of Framework Manager. Uh, what it is, it's a web-based uh, experience for self-service and use case. And it combines uh, RDBMS, big data, um, and spreadsheets that you can upload to it uh, in a Spark SQL process, which helps uh, the imp improve the query performance. Um, and it has some features uh, that, people have been asking for um, in the latest release, such as uh, date and time automation, auto, automation and relative time. So you can, you can use uh, last year, last month, and you can split dates. Um, Multi-grain query and aggregation control, and it has the, the basic table set operations, union, join, view, et cetera. Um, so the goal of data modeling uh, going forward is to add more features so that for many use cases, you might not even need Framework Manager. So overall in 11.1, uh, which is the latest uh, version, um, what are some quality of life improvements? Um, so one is bulk import of users into groups. If you've ever had to do any um, administration, um, I'm sure you've uh, found it uh, tedious to search through individually uh, each user in the Active Directory and to try to find where they are. Uh, what the bulk import lets you do is just get a, if you have a list of users, you can just put that list into the bulk import and import them all into a group at the same time. Um, another improvement, a huge improvement, is uh, the improved navigation and reporting. Uh, so they've kind of changed the layout uh, in reporting to uh, be easier to navigate. So that if you're looking at any one given view, any any page, any query, you can within a, at most two clicks, be able to get to any other page within uh, within the, the report. So you don't have to go through a, a hierarchy of um, 
confusing menus in order to get where you want to go. It's all surfaced for you. And another one is uh, the sticky toolbar. So the context dependent toolbar, instead of floating when you're creating a report, floating above the content you're trying to interact with, you can set it to just stick to the top so that you always know where to move your eyes in order to get the options that you're looking for. So an overview. So what does this all mean for different types of users? So for the analytics teams, uh, these improvements, it means rapid prototyping, agile analytics workflows, and improvements to query performance. For the power user, it's that self-service data blending with data modules, the visualization and data science that comes with uh, the dashboard and the exploration tool. For the consumer, it's just the intelligent search features, the easy customization, the, the AI chatbot, which lets you explore your data using natural language. For the executive, it's the friendly, out-of-the-box mobile experience. And for everyone, it's the Watson uh, integration. So the features roadmap. In the IBM ecosystem, so going forward, integration of Cognos with IBM Watson Studio and IBM Cloud for Private Data, if you, as you heard Mike and Ryan talk about. Uh, and the partner ecosystem, um, partner add-on applications uh, available via Cognos App Store where you can buy uh, add-ons for your uh, environment. For the user experience, uh, continue to refine the UI, improve visualizations, and improve the natural language experience. Um, deployment flexibility, uh, as uh, Mike was talking about with that uh, containerization. So deploy Cognos on IBM Cloud uh, on traditional as a traditional application or via containers uh, or via Docker. Um, the AI journey, so additional algorithmic capabilities, um, categorical and ontological awareness for the chatbot. Um, continuous integration between Cognos Analytics and Planning Analytics to integrate those two products more closely. And for data science, uh, a brand new feature announced exclusively at Think that we're going to share with you. And that is Jupyter Notebooks integration in Cognos. So earlier you heard about uh, integrating Cognos into these other data science tools. So this kind of continues that integration of integrating those data science tools into Cognos. So if you haven't used Jupyter Notebooks before, um, certainly someone in your organization is. It's a very popular uh, data science tool. uses the programming, uh, Python programming language. Uh, so what you'll be able to do is export data to Jupyter Notebooks and manipulate it and then export it back into Cognos. You'll also be able to use Python to create visualizations and then import those uh, Python visualizations back into your uh, Cognos environment. As far as when can you expect to see this, um, that would be in the, the first half of this year is when a release is expected. So on the life cycle. Um, so the release life cycle, because we have a few different, I'm sure everyone uh, on this webinar is using different versions. 11.2.x, um, uh, this is including the three-year extended support. Um, that should be available until April 2021. 11.0.13 uh, is what uh, IBM is calling the long-term support release. So if you stick on this uh, release, you'll be safe. You won't be getting any new features, but you will be getting uh, updates and bug fixes. And then there's the 11.1.x uh, release, which is what they're uh, calling the innovation stream, which will receive uh, feature updates and support updates. Um, and so the LTS and the innovation stream releases will be staggered uh, between each other. So that way um, there'll be enough overlap that customers and partners, it'll give you time to manage your upgrades. So here's this kind of visually what the relief, release life cycle is going to be. Up top, you see that uh, Cognos BI, BI support is ending in September, uh, to April 2021. Um, and then if in the middle, you can see that's the um, innovation stream where you'll be getting the latest releases. Then below that, Oh, sorry. Yeah, in the middle we have the uh, long-term support where you'll, you'll, you'll be you'll be on 11.0.13, uh, and then below that we have the innovation stream where you'll be all completely up to date. And then, uh, Mike, I think you want to take this section. Yeah, I just wanted to tag on here to what uh, Eric had shared in terms of roadmap with. Uh, a little bit more of just even slightly more forward looking. So we, we basically covered there in the first half of 2019. Second half of 2019, I, I can't really share much details about uh, what's here, uh, but just kind of wanted to give you a glimpse of kind of at a very high level 
um, what the, the cognitive development team is focused on. The extensible ontologies there is, is kind of relates to things with the AI assistant, being able to specify kind of terminologies that are relevant for your organization. And then the, the IGCWC integration, um, the IGC is the information governance catalog. So it, it kind of relates to being able to uh, tie more closely your, your governance information, um, lineages and such uh, into what's going on in Cognos. Um, so just a, just a quick peek there into what will be uh, being focused on a little bit further down the line. All right, and uh, so also at Think, we just wanted to briefly mention, we actually did a couple presentations ourselves and uh, if you'd like more information on either of these, we're happy to provide that. So uh, the one presentation that actually Eric uh, did was with the University of, of Louis, a project with the University of Louisville, um, harnessing predictive analytics to help athletes avoid an injury. So this we basically brought together Cognos Analytics and SPSS Modeler, along with some custom development that we did. Uh, to develop a, a really exciting solution. And there's actually a, a case study published online uh, through IBM, which if you go to our website, which I'll talk about here in a second, and go to our blog section, you can actually get to the case study there. And then secondarily was a presentation that I did uh, along with uh, CBRE uh, about a project uh, to create uh, an interactive financial dashboard uh, on top of planning analytics. Um, which was, was very successful. We actually migrated them um, away from Tableau onto Cognos Analytics, and um, they were very happy with what was created. Um, and if you'd like more information about that, uh, certainly uh, reach out to us and we can uh, share what we did for them and how we might be able to help your organization do similar sorts of things. All right, as far as our website, um, great way to stay engaged, uh, not just with us, but with what's going on in the, the realm of, of analytics. Uh, we just launched a new website uh, recently um, where we think is much more easier to navigate. Um, uh, we've, we've kind of boiled down to just what's most important. So it's not just a bunch of, of words on a screen, but uh, you can hopefully find exactly the information you need. So some things to point out there, the blog section, um, we have a lot of smart people working at, at PM Square, and uh, we try to regularly compile the things that we're learning as we're out there uh, in the market working with customers. Um, so technical tips and tricks, kind of strategic advice when it comes to analytics, uh, even career advice. There's all kinds of interesting things there on the blog. And then furthermore, there's the connect section where you can find out more about things like webinars like this, as well as uh, other events that we have going on. And as far as upcoming webinars, we actually do have one scheduled right now, uh, understanding data modules and data sets in Cognos Analytics. Um, this is a really very powerful piece of Cognos Analytics for those of you who haven't really used it extensively yet, especially in Cognos 11.1. Uh, just this area of the tool keeps getting more and more powerful. So uh, Ryan will be um, taking the lead on that webinar. Uh, he's, I would say, one of, the, one of the foremost experts in using data modules and data sets. Uh, in Cognitive Analytics, so he'll have great information to share, and that's on Thursday, March 28th, 2019, at one o'clock Central Time. All right, and now it's time for some Q&A. Uh, we'll turn it back over to Dustin. Thanks, Mike, and uh, thank you, Ryan and Eric, as well, for your presentations. Great job today. Um, I know I learned a bit as I wasn't able to attend all the sessions, I think, so. Thank you guys for bringing that knowledge to us. Um, I do have quite a few questions already and we've got uh, only a few minutes left. So I'm going to start asking these and um, we'll get through as many as we can. If you have a question, please go ahead and enter it into the questions area. Um, if we do not have time to get to it on the call today, we will follow up with everyone and make sure all these questions are answered. Um, okay. so. Uh, first question is, should my team think about migrating our current Cognos environment to the containerized version of Cognos embedded in ICP for data? I can take that one. Uh, that's that's a great question. Um, so I, I would say no, not not today. Um, the the initial implementation into ICP for data, um, if, you, if you're already fully utilizing Cognos in your organization, there could actually be some, some limitations in the initial release in terms of how the, the security is tied into ICP for data, which is 
I think it's a good thing overall, but if you already have security set up in your environment, um, that would be a migration effort you'd have to undertake. Um, also, it's just, it's a brand new thing as well. Um, so we'll continue to do these kinds of webinars and, uh, you know, keep, keep you updated through our blog and such as far as what we see. But um, what I do think is worth mentioning is just that, um, I think Eric mentioned this, that in addition to ICP for data, um, the development team is just in general focused on turning Cognos into a little bit more of a microservices type of application. So there could be some other options coming up in the future um, in addition to just ICP for data. So if you're using ICP for data in your organization, it probably will make sense eventually to utilize that version of Cognos from what we've seen thus far. But even if you aren't, there could be some ways to deploy on top of um, uh, Kubernetes and Docker and such. Uh, so we'll have to all kind of keep our eyes peeled as it comes to that because there isn't specific information that's been released yet, but that's kind of what we're hearing is that as there's an overall move um, towards app modernization that IBM is undertaking, as are many other organizations, um, Cognos is going to be part of that. And so I think there'll be some options in the future that will be worth exploring. Awesome. <clears throat> all right. I think the next one is for Ryan. Uh, can I use Watson Studio with Cognos, and does it integrate? Oh, that's a good one. So, um, yeah, so kind of, right? Uh, it has built into Watson Studio right now is the dashboarding capability from Cognos. So, like, that's kind of like a, yes, that's a one-third <laughs> integration in that it just has some of the features. Um, but overall, you know, so th there's not like a Watson Studio data server or data source type in Cognos, um, but what you can do is it's very easy within Watson Studio um, to say spin up like a, a DB2 instance on cloud, and then as you're running um, your Watson Studio project, you can tell it to save your data off into that DB2 cloud instance, and then you simply point Cognos to that like you would any other uh, DB2 database. And so that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, I would expect, I haven't specifically seen what their intentions are, but you know, we've been told there's a deeper integration coming. So I would expect that process to get easier, easier over time. But honestly, today, it's already pretty easy. If, if you sign up for a Watson Studio Cloud um, free account, you'll see that requesting a new DB2 database literally takes 40 seconds and you have one. Um, so that's what I would do today in order to integrate them. Awesome. Okay. Um, uh, Mike, back to you. Uh, what do you recommend as next step if we want to learn more about ICP for data? Yeah, so uh, you could certainly reach out to us and we can talk about how it might fit into your organization. But uh, also, if, if you just Google IBM Cloud Private for Data, you're going to get taken to a page where you can actually sign up for a seven day trial. And in addition to the trial, there's actually a set of exercises, um, almost like a tutorial uh, that are available right there uh, as well. You won't have to hunt for them. They'll, they'll be right there on the, on the page that you're going to believe it will probably be your first search result. And so that's really a great way to just kind of explore the tool in a little more detail so that you have a little more context uh, uh, for how it works. and can get a feel for it. Um, so, I really like that IBM's made it so easy uh, to kind of get your feet wet there. So just, just Google IBM Cloud Private for data and take it for a spin. Okay, great. Um, uh, sorry, I flagged a few questions to ask and then lost them. Um, oh, uh, this one I think is for Eric. How soon can we expect the Jupyter Notebooks feature to come out? Uh, the, the tentative date is um, the first half of this year, as far as which specific release it's going to be. Um, I can't get much more specific, just the first half of, of this year. Though if I had to guess, just personally, I'd pr it'd be within a release or two. Okay, great. Um, this is, I think, a new feature of Cognos question. So maybe still you, Eric. Is, is Slack integration uh, and chat, chat bot available yet, or is that coming out in a future release? Is that available in the 11.1 .1 release? Um, I'm actually not sure, Ryan. Uh, I think you might, uh, and also on the panel, have some insight on this. I haven't looked into the Slack bot. Yeah. Slack bot. 
Uh, yeah, no. So, um, I mean, those are both available now. Um, okay. Slack integration with Cognos and that, that AI chatbot are both. So if you were to go out and download the most recent release of Cognos, you'd have both of those. Okay. All right. Well, we're at the end of the hour. We probably have another dozen questions here that, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get to live on the call, um, but we will follow up. I see there are quite a few about Cognos security, um, future enhancements to PowerPlay Studio. Uh, we will make sure that we send out any questions that uh, that were asked with uh, the follow-up notes, anyone who attended. So we'll get all these qu uh, questions with some answers out to everyone shortly. Um, so thank you everyone for attending. Thank you again to our, our uh, panelists here on the call and for the great presentations. And uh, our contact information, uh, our email addresses are on the screen. If you have specific questions about anyone's presentation, feel free to reach out to any of us and we'd be happy to help you. All right, thanks everyone.